Good afternoon, everyone. Harvest at a standstill across the southeast U.S. Too much rain. Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina. This is what it looked like with these some record rains in locations. Now we're looking at record cold all the way down into southern Mexico. 20 to 25 degrees below normal temperatures. Snow in Tennessee at this time of the year, that's rare. This is a weather front that's passing from south to north, dropping snow, sleet, and a mix of precipitation. This is your forecast for the intensifying grand solar minimum. We know where it was cooler last time on the planet. We know where the rain bands shifted to. Yet they're still trying to tell you that the wheat outlook's great, even though the prices continue upward. We can break it down by the type of wheat in case you're interested in that. And this ethanol corn we're using, that's going to stop when we need to start eating this. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. We're going to start off here with the Winter Weather Advisory, Middle Tennessee. This should make you question what's going on anyway as this weather front proceeds from south to north with this slamming together of weather fronts causing already snow and freezing rain in the southeast U.S. And progressing up through the next 48 hours if you're in any of these states on the east coast, this is what you can expect. A combination of anything that can fall from the sky freezing or wet. Now the harvest is well underway in the U.S., but these unusual rains are hampering the harvest. Anywhere you're looking at that orange to yellow, they're delayed in planting. The fields are incredibly soggy. Two inches, three inches of rain in Georgia. I'm going to zoom in for you. You can see exactly how much has fallen. Crops are becoming incredibly moldy in the fields. If they hadn't used any types of fungicides... You should read across the comment boards on AgWeb, wet, wet, lost crops, moldy crops, and this is what the field's looking like in the southeast U.S. So the delays are in Alabama. Now I've highlighted in blue, it shows you how many harvestable days out of these seven days for this week there were. So 2.7 days out of the entire week were they able to get machinery into the fields because it's just too wet. Field work is what they term it. Georgia, 3.4 days. But then when we come to places like Louisiana, incredibly heavy rains, 0.9, not even a full one day out of the entire week to get harvested. Farmers continue to share stories of crops being buried in mud and an enormous amount of losses at this time. Mississippi, same thing, not even a full day this week due to inclement rain and cooler than normal conditions. Up in South Carolina, mixed report, three days out of the entire week due to the same rain. This grand solar minimum is forecast to have these exact effects on our weather patterns as the jet streams shift. We're going to be moving out into 2030. They're expecting global food shortages by 2028. So here's a roadmap coming out on how intense the weather is going to change. So the wider these two lines are, The magnetic fields on the sun are canceling out. So the wider the waves are, the wider the lines are, the more extreme the weather is going to become. Now right between the demarcation of the yellow and the green is where we are moving in to the right. And predicted with this extreme weather were high winds and out of season cold temperatures. Here we go. This is the second time this year that it's been 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal all the way down to Texas and the Mexican border. Arctic blast number two, according to Ryan Maui. Looking at the temperature anomaly here, that dark purple that you see, 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, and straight through the center of the U.S., that is where they're in harvest. Some delays, cold, and out of season as we get toward the tapering end of the harvest season. 
Gonna pause the map here. You just don't see this every day. The extremes in the Great Lakes and the extremes in Mexico are matching on the temperatures degrees Celsius below normal. This is not even Fahrenheit. These are Celsius temperatures, which are even cooler than Fahrenheit. We got a little heat out to the west, little heat over to the east coast, but where these heat and cold lines are colliding, they're so visible right there. Where do you see the giant lines of cold and hot air masses creating massive weather fronts? Now, through the year, the USDA has been telling us how rosy the forecasts are. They're expecting above average yields per acre, etc. But when we look at the wheat pricing, that doesn't make sense. How could this year be above the last couple of years if we're supposed to have even more record production this year? It's an inverse. The price should be going down if this is truly the case. So I dove a little bit deeper into the wheat outlook here. They've broken it down by the types of wheat, the hard red winter wheat, the hard red spring, soft red winter, got the white wheat, got the durum that we use for pastas. So I took the liberty of putting the red boxes there for the year on year, either declines in red or increases in green. So you can see which type of wheat is being affected the most. And also a side note, take a look at the area planted. Even this year when there was more planted acreage, the yield was even less than when they planted less last year. Something's going on. They're not giving us the full truth about the field conditions and the harvest coming in. Again, I've had so many people ask me, what about these prices? Where are they going? A glimpse into this week's prices. Again, if it's encapsulated in a green box, that means price increases. If it's in a red box, decreases. So you can see three out of the four different types of wheat up, up, up. Yet they're telling you your prices are going to stabilize in your food supply. I don't think so. Another interesting tidbit here, we know where the temperatures have cooled in the past. Which areas on the planet received the most temperature change during the Maunder Minimum? I want you to take a look at North Africa, Central Europe, Russia, and that central swath of North America. I'm going to bring you into a little bit straight down on the North Pole view as well, so you can get a little bit different glimpse into what's going on. See any similarities to the temperature anomalies in the North American map, how far it's extending south. Now the reason I bring that up is, if you noticed in North Africa, Algeria and Morocco, extreme drops in temperature, yet they're the ones who import most from Canada. Now if their local production is going to decrease and decrease further and further, they're going to rely more on imports. But at the same time, globally, production forecasts are down, 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 down into absolute global food shortages by 2028. So where are they going to get their wheat from? They can't grow it, and in the future they won't be able to import it. So take a look at the hot spot on the map there. You can just pause the video, take a look through. Now I mentioned the Great Lakes. Look at these high temperatures. These are in degrees Fahrenheit. But when you have high temperatures, not low, these are the highs for the day. Let's go up to the Canadian border right there and just swing along into the dark colors. 10 degrees Fahrenheit for the high for the day. They're still trying to plant up there the winter wheat. This is why there's so many delays in the planting of the winter wheat at the moment. So these high swaths of temperatures that are only reaching daytime high temperatures of the teens, you would expect this in January, February, but not something in very early November. This is completely out of season. Now staying in that same area, Ohio's getting the same reports. Too wet, way too much rain. Indiana as well, slowed down, too much rain. Now they have the cold on top of that. Their harvest are delayed. Yet the USDA says, hey, it's all good. Let's lay on the bed of roses. It's happy. Let's all dance. I'm going to bring you over here to another very important part of the shift of the Grand Solar Minimum. This has been mapped out for the last 3,000 years, how the moisture patterns move and shift during the Grand Solar Minimum. I'm going to white out this here for you. So these bands of the intertropical convergence zone, they're not static in the atmosphere and they don't remain in the same exact place for centuries and centuries and centuries. They move depending on solar activity and how tight our magnetosphere is and they're on the move again. This is the reason there's so many record floods across the planet. 
all of this precipitation is moving into new pattern areas. So I want you to keep in mind another economic factor moving forward. This is what we eat. I know it's GMO and I know a lot of people are very much against it. Now taking a look at the gasoline demand, I should say ethanol blend into the gasoline demand. How many millions of barrels per day and how many millions of bushels are being re-diverted from our food source right over into the fuel source? This is going to cease by mandate or by mob rule. This diverting our food source into the gasoline tank is going to stop. Ethanol companies into the future don't know how they're going to operate when you're going to be fighting over every last kernel that comes out of the fields. Now we're not talking about a couple hundred years of temperature here, going back 12,000 years to take a look at these repeating cycles. Temperature is always up, it's always down, it's always moving, and it is not stable for more than 50 to 100 years at a time maximum. Our climate is always changing. And once you take a look further out at these longer time scales versus the 40 year record, the 120 year thermometer record, once we take a look back 12,000 years, you get a little different glimpse that temperatures were way warmer than they are now. It seems that each successive heat spike is lower and lower and lower, and we're gonna drop off that heat spike right now. And how low will we go? Many people are predicting two to three degrees Celsius drop, not Fahrenheit, Celsius, which would absolutely cut our global agricultural production to almost nothing. This is the forecast going out. You can see the timeline. You know how much time you have left? It was just given to you as a wrapped package by Valentina Zarkova. These massive weather changes, well, you're going to start to see it now. They're calling it a wisp, a change of what's coming 2020 is when we're really going to see massive changes. Expect crop losses, food price increases, rationing, but the global food shortages come in 2028. It's not going to happen on 2028, January 1st. We're going to slowly move into this non-availability of food. Don't care if you have money, you're not going to get it. Might as well start preparing now. You know the timeline. Rationing and police interventions in, let's say, supermarkets, warehouses, and food storage facilities, eh, 2023. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of commentary, mini Ice Age Conversations tri-weekly podcast, talking about moving forward, how this is going to affect your life and everybody's life on this planet, and how you can take steps to protect yourself and thrive during this time of danger.